go ahead and go into the cast ballot now. Okay, again, from the front end, uh, we've actually logged in now. Um, and the last thing I want to show you is the cast ballot. Again, from the UI, uh, client, uh, we're at home, um, we validate the voter, everything is good. Now, um, we've router got pushed this cast ballot, which is going to take us to this cast ballot view. And in here, um, we have another V on submit. So submit, uh, if you click the button, go ahead and click the cast ballot. And uh, this is the cast ballot transaction again. And we're going to take the picked, which is the, um, which is going to be, this is the picked. You can see it here. Um, and we're going to take the voter ID, which again is this thing. And we're going to cast the vote. So let's go ahead and do some error checking. So if we cast the vote, uh, could not find our voter ID with this in the state. Make sure you're entering a, a valid voter ID. Um, that's that's what this error is coming from. Um, we have another. So now let's just say that everything is working fine. So now, uh, so we made sure that we've picked something and the voter ID is not undefined. Then we go into the cast ballot, and that's going to look for our in our server um, for again for the cast ballot. API. So this is the cast ballot API. And every time we connect to the network with our voter ID, which is going to look for our wallet and our identity on our wallet and use that to submit, to submit the transaction. And that's really, really, really important. Again, we're going to call cast vote and we're going to pass in the args. The args are just going to be this, uh, this picked and voter ID. So let's go ahead and go into invoke. Invoke is going to say, yes, this is not a query. So it's going to go into the no query and then it's going to have args. So it's going to go into contract.submit transaction. And now let's go, go ahead and go into our contract and then um, we'll go into cast vote. So again, how do we get there is that we passed in, um, in our app.js, we passed in cast vote, which is actually the function in the network.js, we our third argument is the function, and that's what we're passing in. So that's how it how this contract knows to go and find the cast vote transaction. Once it's found the cast vote transaction, it enters in here. We have the arguments. The arguments uh, is what political party we picked, which is the votable ID. So first, um, we we check, and then we also have the election ID, which is which we grab um, in our init function. Um, and if you remember in our init function, we create the elections and then we just grab this election, make sure it exists. Um, then we actually get the voter and make sure that the voter has not cast the ballot. So if we try to cast the ballot again, we'll get an error here saying that this person has already cast, right? And we've already, we've already, we've already seen that. Um, so we should have one for libertarian. Perfect. Um, and yeah, that, then we check that we create a new date for the election. And we just make sure that we're in a valid date to actually start the election. And then um, we make sure that we're voting for something correctly here. And then we read the asset and we increment the count for the votable. So the votable is the ID. So the votable ID. So the votable ID is Republican, Democrat, Green, Green, Independent, Libertarian. These are the IDs. And then when you pick one of them, it's going to look for that ID and make sure it's in the state. So again, um, if we, when we look for something in the state, we're essentially just querying by key. So we do that here and then we get what's, what's going on. So libertarian, right? Okay. Yeah. So you can see the current count of libertarian too. Um, so we just increment the count there. Um, we, we update the state with the count and then now we do voter ballot cast is true so that we know if this voter tries to double vote, um, the app won't let him. That's essentially it uh, for the cast ballot. Um, so that was uh, more or less it. Um, I'm not gonna go through all the querying, but you can kind of see that the, the query is, is similar here. Um, we have query all, query with a query, query sting, et cetera. Okay, so now that we figure out a cast ballot, let's go ahead and show you one more thing. So in the UI, we have this, um, we have this get current standing. So here I just imported this um, bar from viewchart.js. And again, we just have this check poll. And on the on click, we get get current standing. And what we're doing here is we're actually, when we do get current standing, we call the API in the back end uh, on the server and we call get uh, current. So then we just connect to the network and then we query by object type, so votable items. Um, so query by type, uh, votable items, you can see here, and then you'll see the count here. Uh, so the count for libertarian is one, and then Republican is one. 
So all we're doing in the back end is we're querying for that, and we get that response, and then we send the send the response in the uh, in the front end. Now, once we get that response, we get all the uh, count uh, count numbers, the numbers. So then I get all the counts and then put them in an array. So I count, I make this array all the different counts, and then we add that array, this this current standing array, um, and we these are the values that will populate the graph. Um, and then we're just using that current standing array, and then we just hide the spinner. Um, so nothing too complicated there, um, but that's essentially it. Um, so what I've done for you today is I've broken down the app. So we've gone from the UI, which is using kind of this, uh, this Vue.js, um, and this is what's populating the UI. We have this main app.view class or app.view file, which has all the main uh, links in here. Then we have the main.js, which imports everything. And then the really important part is this, uh, what I haven't shown you too much is this router, which, which imports all of these um, different components, all these view components that, that gets the components from here. And then it um, adds these components to the path. So the paths are defined in the app, right? App.js, and also in the app.view here. Um, and then the, the, the router is actually uh, binding all these paths together. And what we've seen is that in these view files, we have this on submit, and then this on submit actually calls the function, and it takes in um, our data from the UI, uh, from the UI, which we make here. And we have all these input fields here that actually grabs the data. We go ahead and we call this post service validate voter. That's calling our back end. So in our back end, um, you can see uh, services or the services API service. So we ha these are all the API endpoints that we have that are going to call our back end. So our back end is running on localhost 8081, and this app dot this uh, file is what's defining all our back end endpoints. And then uh, this network file is the last layer before we go into the contract. The contract here is where we call a validate transaction and submit transaction, and that's actually calling the deployed contract on the network. So hopefully that makes sense. We go from the view file, the 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 front end code, and then which calls our kind of our middle layer, which is um, a post service. Yeah, it calls our post service, which is kind of our middle layer. Our post service has this. Um, has this API service, which is going is taking all our arguments from the front end and passing them to the back end. The back end is in this app.js file and now implements this fabric API, which is calling our smart contract. So those are the kind of the main layers. The view layer, again, the uh, the connector between the back end and the view uh, API endpoints. Then we have the actual express backend. Then we have the actual client application, which is implemented by the Fabric network. And again, the Fabric network is this um, this package right here. And this is the last layer before we call the smart contract. So I know this is kind of a lot. Um, I wanted to really deep dive into this. Um, so thanks again for watching. Hope you learned something. And until next time, bye.